Renai, you require 74. Game shot and the third leg. Renee. Sometimes those single numbers are the hardest. Oh, two darts at top. It's here for Grundy to break. Game shot oh, what and the fifth leg. Finish from Grundy Rob Grundy. There. You require 114. Game, oh, shot, and the there. match. Rene Aydan. A very unconventional finish of 114 there, leaving himself 34. But that was enough to get him the job done to win this first match 4-2 with an average of 94.35, which I think is Rene's highest average we've seen from him so far this week. So maybe the uh, couple of days off have done him well. Four from eight on the checkouts, 50%. That highest checkout of 114 there in that last leg. Grundy did nothing wrong there either. Uh, 94 average himself and 40% on the checkouts. But that is the first game of Group 1 done. Next up, we'll be seeing Daryl Pilgrim versus Darren Johnson. Daryl, you require 107. Tops for Pilgrim here to take Game out the first shot leg. Made the no first mistake leg. of that one. Daryl Pilgrim. Travel about to Darryl, you together. require 63. Game shot and the third leg. Daryl Pilgrim. Darren, you require 42. Game yeah. shot and the fourth leg. Darren the Johnson. Johnson there taking out the 32. I feel like he'd had a lot of practice starts around that side of the board, so was bound to hit one sooner or later. Darren, you require 120. Game oh, shot and the fifth there leg. From Johnson to be Darren told, Johnson. To pull off the Shanghai on the 20s for a 120 finish. But we also Darren, talk you about being 78. able to hit the right scores at the right time. That's often what wins you matches, and that was. Oh, and what Game another great finish the from Johnson on the sixth leg. On Darren the Johnson. That was definitely Darren, an adrenaline-fueled start there at the double four for Pilgrim. This is for the match. A dart that he would not have been expecting to get. One at it. Game. And he hits shot. It. And you the match. Say it's Darren Johnson. Darren Johnson. That did not look probable. He needed to reel the ball off one after the other. And he did exactly that. The average is nothing to write home about, mainly because of the double stats. Good, good high checkouts there. 107 and 120. We're heading to a break and we will be back with you with another game. Shortly. Steve, you require 68. Brown will get one dart at something. It looks to be tops. Game shot and the second leg. Hits it right in the corner. Steve Brown. Well, Steve, we were saying earlier in this 74. leg that it, this probably wasn't going to be the leg that Brown was going to break in, and now he's going to have at least a dart at tops here. Game and shot and the third leg. <laughs> Steve Brown. Case of Steve, you require too close 72. With those first two. Yeah, particularly with the way that his darts lie. Oh, missed single number there. Corrected Game itself. shot on oh, no. the sixth leg. <laughs> Steve Brown. It. Rob, you require 20. This is where you have to be mentally strong. Game and strong shot. He was. And Rob the match. Grundy Rob Grundy. He will be one relieved man. He will be off back into that player's room. Have a sit down and half a shandy. And gather his thoughts. But it's Rob Grundy goes through 4-3. 83-4-8 on the average. Enough this time. 
Four 180s. Four out of 25 on the doubles. You think he's going to have to sharpen that up. We will be back after a short break with Darren Johnson versus John Worsley. And John, you require 134. He's going to go tops, start. tops. He is. Game and shot in the third what leg. A fantastic John one, Worsley. three, four check out from John Worsley. John, you require 18. There's been a 18. lot of missed doubles from Johnson in this match so far. Game shot and the match. John Worsley. John Worsley. There's a story of missed doubles there for Darren Johnson. But Worsley will be happy to be over the line. He was better in the averages. Slightly better in the doubles. And he had the highest checkout in that match. But Johnson already has that win under his belt. We head to a short break. And we will join you after with Steve Brown, Rennie Items. Rene, you require 76. Across the double 18. Game shot on the first leg. A tidy finish Rene and break Adams. a throw. Steve, you require Not able 75. To find that double eight, though, so gives Brown the chance. Now he's going to have two at 24. Cross to double six. Been getting himself out of jail with these types of shots. Game shot to the second leg. And he's done Steve it once Brown. more to, to secure his place in the semi final. Yes, we did talk about the fact that he didn't actually need to win this match. He just needed to win. 119. To Rene, you require 124. 14 for ball. Oh, and he's missed the big single number. We've seen him do this a couple of times already this evening. I do often say those single numbers are the hardest. 84. Ones. Steve, you, you require would know that he only needs two legs? Mm, I'm not quite sure. I think he would know he only needs a few legs. Game and shot and the dark. fourth leg. Steve Steve Brown. Steve Brown getting himself a break of throw and the advantage of a 3-1 lead. Is it going to go three ball or 13 tops? 13 tops it is. Game and shot on the fifth for leg. A one ten Rennie check out Adams. for Rennie Items, which means that he has qualified through to a semi final position. Two legs was all he needed. It's all about Brown now. It's a little bit tense up there on the big stage tonight. Take stock. It's like throwing again now once you step back. Game shot. But he's hit it. And the match. He Steve 50%, Brown. And he hit it. Looks to, looks to me like Idems thinks he's out. We don't seem to think that. We will get back to you shortly. But there is the result. Once again, it's not about the averages. It's about how tense that match was. It looks to me... And what we're being told in our ear that Steve Brown now wins the group with that 4-2 win and Rennie Items finishes runner-up. We are off to a short break and we will back with some more tension here at the darts with John Walsley against Daryl Pilgrim. One hundred and eighty. It's just around one eighties for fun now. One eighty number sixteen for the evening. We are on game number six. Fifty-five. Daryl, you require forty-one. It's been a great start from Pilgrim. But the fact that he knows. Game shot and the first this. leg. Daryl Pilgrim. And that is a polished. Obviously looking for a single nine to leave 32. Hit the treble nine. 
straight down to the double seven. One hundred and eighty. <laughs> He's put himself in this position. He is by Jove going to get himself out of it in his head. Here comes Worsley. One hundred and eighty. And with a blink of an eye, we are on <laughs> one hundred and eighty. We've had nine darts thrown, three one eighties. Oh, Morsley's just upset the show with not being on a nine darter himself. Daryl, you require one hundred and forty-one. He started down. He won't be worrying about that now. He'll be more... 78. ...worried about winning the leg. Big deflection 125. there. 125. Daryl, you require 63. Did it well. Potential for another 11 data here from Pilgrim. Not to be this time. Tops he wants. 23. I like that way as well. John, you require 101. It is good because he, I mean, he loves the 36. So 27 is good targets. Still doable for Worsley here. Needs a treble 20. Doesn't find it. Looks like he's coming out to the treble 16 for 76. 73. Daryl, you Big require 48. 28. Will he get back? Game the shot and the second no. leg. Daryl Pilgrim. On you require 61. He's 164, so Worsley. Game yeah. shot and the fifth leg. He gets himself John Worsley. back into this match. Daryl, you require 32. Being let out of jail here. And Game it is. shot. And, and the match, the semi final puts himself right through it, gets himself out of it. So it will be Pilgrim who actually goes through as top of the group. Wolseley there, 93.62. His comeback was on the way, but Pilgrim, a solid 96 for him. We will be back with you after a short break. Steve, you require 36. Actually, I don't think we've seen a bullseye finish so far this evening. Game shot and the Brown second leg. Steve Doubling Brown. his lead at 2-0 in this semi-final. Steve, you require 90. Too. I feel that there might have been a bit of tension. Going to go 15. Oh, double 10 for the match. 70. Oh, just out the John, wrong you require side of the wire 40. There. Game Worsley's shot and the fourth leg, this. John Worsley. In this week of the Super Series. Game yes, shot were, like, and game the match, shot and match Steve Brown. Steve Brown taking that first semi-final 4-1 over John Worsley. And some great darts there from Brown, better than we've seen earlier this evening. Average of 85, four up and 10 on the doubles. Nice check out of 40. I mean, Worsley there didn't play to the standard that we have seen him play 79 average and one from seven. But it is Steve Brown who is the first confirmed player through to the final of week 10 of the Super Series. Up next, we will have our second semifinals, which will see Daryl Pilgrim take on Rennie Items. Two. I think, but Rennie Items is on something a lot handier than the 140 of Pilgrim. Game shot and the second leg. Rennie well, Idams. Well, check out there for Idams has doubled his lead at 2-0. Feel like this 83 needs to go for Pilgrim. Oh, is he going to go tops, tops? He is. Oh, 43. And just the wrong side of the wire there for him. Now you require 16. There wasn't a hesitation, was there? There wasn't any disappointment at hitting the three. It was like, I'm okay. I can go tops, tops. I do it all the time. Is that a good marker there? Good line. Yeah. 
Yes. Game shot in the fourth leg. And that's double eight. Rennie Adams, Adams giving him a three-one lead here in this second semi-final. Be getting rid of him as if they were a hot spot in his hand. Good marker. And it was Game good enough. shot on the fifth leg. Daryl Pilgrim. Is. Pilgrim's able to hold throw, get it back to 3 2. Renner, you require 24. As items goes for 24 to take the match. Game and he wins shot. It with and a the 13 match. dart leg. Renny Idams. It's 4 2. The bookie's favourite. Daryl Pilgrim has gone. We have ourselves a final we weren't expecting. Renny Idams. Showed some grit there and determination. He wins that semi-final number two, four two. He was slightly lower on the lower on the averages, but he won't be worried about that. He's made the final here on Saturday evening at the Motor Super Series, and we'll be back with that after a break. Sixteen. So Adams is back for the sixty-eight. Gonna have to go 13 bull, and again we see him miss that big number. 28. We've seen him do that Steve, several you require times. 40. Game oh. shot on the first oh, leg. No mistake Steve about Brown. those two tens there. Steve, That's you require 20 on those three earlier this evening. I don't think Game Steve shot on the here. third leg. Right, Steve leading. Brown. Rene, you require 82. 49 is not going to be enough. Topsy wants. Game shot and the fourth for leg. Renee Adams for the fourth Renee leg to Adams. get him on the scoreboard. Renee, you require 40. Game shot yes, and the nice fifth leg. Tops there from Renee Adams. Adams. For that. Adams now got three darts to even this match up. Double six. Game and shot and the it. sixth Double leg. Double six. Renee Adams. So now we have a real match on our hands. It's three legs of Heath. Oh, just a bit high there, but he will be back. Eighty-two. Rene, you require forty. Game. There it is. Shot. One dart at top. And the Super Series Week Rennie Ten Adams champion is our Rennie Week Ten Adams. champion. Coming from. 3-0 down to roll off four legs on the spin. What an amazing effort from him there. The stats don't show that it was the greatest match of all times, but as we've talked about many a times before, averages don't always make the match. They certainly don't mean that you win the games, but that was a match that contained just about everything that you need. Rainy out items, 83, 6, 4 average, only the 1, 180. Four from 13 on the checkouts, but importantly, he hit those doubles when he needed to, particularly coming from 3-0 down. Steve Brown, on the other hand, started off, yeah, like a bull at a gate, 3-0 up. I mean, he'll probably be thinking about some of those darts he's thrown there for a, for a good few minutes after that to be able to have dwindled away that 3-0 lead to come off with a 4-3 loss, but... There you have it. That's it. That is week 10 all sealed. So Rennie Adams will be the one joining us as the week 10 champion to come back to Champions Week in just a few short weeks time. So to, I will hand over to Henry and to be able to make the presentations. Ladies and gentlemen, to make the presentations, the 2015 Lakeside World Champion, Scotty Dog. Scott Mitchell. Hi, Dan's many, many congratulations. If I just bring you just in here for a very quick word, if that's okay, well done. Many congratulations. You are into Champions Week. Just sum up exactly how you're feeling right now. Uh, I can one sentence say mm -hmm. I'm over the moon. Mm -hmm. For me, it's really, really great experience here. And uh, wow, I feel very good. Is this one of your best feelings in darts right now? Yeah, sure. Uh, I have not played my best uh, darts on this week, but uh, it is enough for the final wins, and I'm I'm so happy. The other players are so good, and the table was so close every time, and 
I'm feel really, really, really happy. You seem to do enough just to get over the line each game that you asked yourself. And, and that final from 3-0 down, what, what were you thinking? Yeah, uh, I'm 3-0 down and I think, Rini, come on, please. Play a little bit darts for the crowd and for my friends and for my family. I don't know. I, I want to know for null, no whitewash. I think, come on, one leg and one leg more and one leg more. And then, yeah. You found yourself at 3-3 and it was your darts. Yeah, then after 3-3, three, I three, uh, feel good and uh, confident and there. Yeah, it's happened. Yeah. And now, when you're into Champions Week, you're joining a very exclusive list of players. Not many get the opportunity to play at Champions Week. I can see the smile on your face. How much are you looking forward now to playing in that? Yeah, I'm, look, I'm looking really forward. I, I'm so happy to come back here and play the final week. I'm so happy. Well, we'll let you go and celebrate with the trophy. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for our winner in Week 10, Rene Idams. Many congratulations goes to him. There he is with his trophy in hand. Special moments, and they are special moments, Scott. You know what it's like to win one of those trophies, one of those titles on a TV stage. They're big moments, aren't they? They're life-changing in a dark player's career. They change your career and your outlook on everything. You started to get over hurdles that you didn't think you could get over. He'll go away from here this week, a totally different player. And of course, as I say, he was kind of the most consistent player over the week. When you look at Group A, those first couple of days, he was the one that was able to find something. He qualified through, and also what he has done, not many players in Group A go and qualify through to the finals, the Champions Week, and he's done exactly that. No, exactly. It's a rare thing. And, and, and you know, he didn't even dominate Group A. He just did enough to get over the line. And, and I'm sure that winning Group A was, was a surprise to him come Wednesday evening. So he's probably sat there with his hotel room for a couple of days going, wow, how, how was this me in the group of names that I was with? But he's taken that confidence on. You know, he's been stellar. He's performed well. And he's performed when he needed to perform. And that's a secret about this game. It doesn't matter about averages. It's about winning games. And he did all he needed to do to win those games. Just a word about Steve Brown. Of course, three nil up in that final. That's going to feel very, very sore at the minute. Absolutely. Yeah. There's, no, there's no sort of way that when you're that three nil up and you can start thinking of the finish line. And he had a dart. He had mm. a dart at double ten, didn't he? So, look, that may be playing on his mind. I'm sure that that it will play on his mind tonight and maybe for a couple of days, but I'm sure that he'll be headstrong back into the work that he does elsewhere and he'll soon forget it, hopefully. As far as René Aydans is concerned and as far as Champions Week is concerned, it means another nationality that's going to be in the mix. We're going to have German representation here in a couple of weeks' time. And when you have a look at some of the nationalities and some of the different types of players that are into that Champions Week, we've got a number of different nations, a number of different types of players. We're 10 weeks into the process now, and that Champions Week field, well, I think it's going to be the best one yet, possibly. How do you see it? Well, I think they're all fancying it, because once you've come here and you've won that trophy and you've won a Saturday night, you can't wait to get back here with the confidence that you won with on that night. So there are going to be 12 guys by the end of this, end of this series that really feel that they can go there and take the big money. Been a good night all round, Scott, hasn't it? Yeah, it has for me. I've really enjoyed the night. Well, it's been a pleasure to be in your company, a pleasure to be in the company of Corinne Hammond as well. Well, week 11 gets underway Monday morning, 9.30 a.m. And boy, do we have quite the cast list for you. John Henderson's going to be in action. The reigning world master, Wesley Plazier, is going to be here. Jared Cole, Robbie King from Australia. It's going to be an incredible lineup. But as far as week 10 is concerned here at the Super Series, it is Rennie Idams, who's the big cheese. Bye-bye for now.